Hello again. So far, we've been using Python from within the Java Virtual Machine. However, in this lesson, we're going to invoke Weka from within Python. But you might ask, why the other way? Isn't it enough using Jython? Well, yes and no. Jython limits you basically to pure Python code and to Java libraries. And Weka provides only modeling and some limited visualizations. However, Python has so much more to offer. For example, NumPy, a library for efficient arrays and matrices, SciPy for linear algebra, optimization and integration. There's Matplotlib, a great plotting library. You can check all this out on the Python wiki under the American Scientific Libraries. So, what do we need? Well, first of all, we have to install Python 2.7, which you can download from python.org. Um, but make sure that Java that you've got installed in your machine and Python have the same bitness. So they're either 32-bit or 64-bit. You cannot mix things. And you have to set up an environment that you can actually compile some libraries. On Linux, that's an absolute no-brainer. A few lines on the command line and you're done within five minutes. However, OS X and Windows are quite a bit of work involved. So it's not necessarily for the faint-hearted. So you can install the Python Weka repo library, which we're going to use in today's lesson. And you find that uh, in some instructions on how to install for the various platforms on that page. So good luck with that. And I've got it already installed. So I'm going to talk a bit about more what the Python Weka wrapper actually is. So this library fires up a Java virtual machine in the background and communicates via the, with the JVM via Java native interface. It uses the Java bridge library for doing that. And the Python Weka wrapper library sits on top of that and provides a thin wrapper around basically Weka superclasses like classifiers, filters, clusters, and so on. And in difference to the Jython code that I've seen so far, it provides a lot more a Pythonic API. Here's some examples. Python properties are, for example, used instead of the Java get set method pairs. For example, options instead of get options set options. It uses lowercase plus underscore instead of Java's camel case. So cross validate underscore model instead of cross capital V validate capital M model. It also has some convenience methods that Weka doesn't have. For example, data dot classes last instead of data set class index data dot number attributes minus one. And plotting is done via matplotlib. Right. So I presume you were lucky installing everything and you sorted everything out. And I've already done that on my machine here because it takes way too long. And I'm going to fire up the interactive Python interpreter. And for the first script, we basically want to revisit cross validating a J48 classifier. So as with all the other examples, we had to import some libraries, of course. So in this case, we are communicating with the JVM, so we have to have some form of communicating with it and starting and stopping it. So we import the Weka Core JVM library module and um, we want to load data. So we're going to import the converters and we're importing valuation and classifier. First of all, we're going to start the JVM. In this case, the, in using the packages as well is not strictly necessary, but we'll just do it. You can see a lot of output here. It basically tells you what the libraries are in the class path, which is all good. Next thing is we're going to load some data. In this case, our anneal data set. Once again, using the same approach that we've already done with Jython, using the environment variable. That's loaded. Then we're going to set the class, which is the last one. And we're going to configure our J48 classifier. So whereas in Jython we simply said, oh, I want to have the J48 class. Here we're basically going to instantiate a classifier class here. 
and tell BiNSQL that class what Java class to use, which is our J48 classifier, and with what options. So the same confidence factor of Point Freddy. <clears throat> and once again, same thing for the evaluation class. We instantiate an evaluation object with the training data as to determine the priors, and then cross-validate the classifier on the data with tenfold cross-validation. That is done. And now we can also output our evaluation summary. Done. And this is sort of like simply with evaluation.summary, the title, and we don't want to have any um, complexity statistics being output. And since in our Jive example we also had the confusion matrix, we're going to output that as well. And here's our confusion matrix. And one thing you should never forget is once you're done you also have to stop the JVM and shut it down properly. So we can see once again like with the other one we have 14 misclassified examples out of our eight, almost 900 examples and you can count those 3, 2, 2 and 7, 14 here in the confusion matrix as well. For the next script we'll be plotting the classifier errors obtained from a linear regression classifier on a numeric data set and once again we'll be using the errors between predicted and actual as the size of the bubbles that we're going to do. Once again I'm going to fire up the interactive Python interpreter. I'm going to import as usual a bunch of modules. Um, in this case new is the plotting module for classifiers I'm going to import here and we'll start up our JVM. We are loading our body fat data set in, setting the class attribute. Then we're going to configure our linear regression. Once again, turning off some bits that make it faster. And we're going to evaluate it on our data set with tenfold cross validation. Done. And now we can plot it with a single line. Of course, we're cheating here a little bit because the module does a lot of the heavy lifting, which we had to do with Jive manually. And here we go. Nice plot. So, of course, you can also zoom in if you wanted to. Right, and the final step, stop the JVM again, and we can exit. The last script that we're going to do in this lesson will be plotting multiple RSC curves like we've done with Jython. Once again, the Python interpreter. That's a nice thing, you can just open it up and do stuff straight away. Import stuff, once again we're using the plotting module for classifiers. We are starting up the JVM. Starting to get good at that. Loading the balance scale data set like we did with Jython. And we also use the naive base classifier. As you can see this time there's no options. Cross validate the whole thing. Ten for cross validation. And then we use the plot RC method to plot everything. And we want to plot 0, 1, and 2 class label indices. And here we have those. Once again, we can see the AUC values for each of the labels, whether it's L, B, or R. And final step. Stopping the JVM again and exiting. Okay, so in this lesson, we actually you install Python and additional modules via Python's pip command, and we used Weka from within a native Python environment using the Python Weka wrapper library. See you next time.